Oops. No, I just forgot some of my papers here. Yeah. Memorial Day weekend, we also celebrate our triune three-person God. Three persons, one God. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. A uh, couple of announcements. We have completed our Bible study, so we'll begin again in the fall and hope some of you who weren't with us will join us. And if you have any desire for a particular book of the Bible, then let me know and we'll take a look and see what we can do on that. Let us turn in our bulletin to our responsive call to worship. It is based on Psalm 29, verses 1 to 4 and 7 to 11. Ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The voice of the Lord is powerful and majestic. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forests bare. And in his temple all cry, Lord. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Let us join in our hymn of praise, number 809, God of our fathers, if you're able, let us stand.
turn in our bulletin to our responsive, uh, to our unison prayer of invocation and confession. And let us pray together, saying, Triune God of all creation, declares your glory. Your majesty and might, your grace and goodness, shine before us and draw us into your presence. You revealed yourself in the person of your Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. In Jesus, we see the human face of your love. In addition, you breathe new and everlasting life into our very beings. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, three in one God, source of our hope and joy, we confess we do not steward the earth as we should. Forgive us, Lord. We confess we fail to live out Jesus' command to love one another as he loved us. Forgive us, O oh God. We confess that we betray our faith when we depend on our own strength rather than trusting in yours. Forgive us, Lord. Holy God, Creator, Redeemer, and life-giving Spirit, fill us anew with your grace that we may be reborn in your image, giving glory to you in all we do and say. Hear us now as we lift our personal confessions in silence. We remember God so loved the world <clears throat> that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Rejoice, people of grace, in Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us join our voices in the prayer Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Please be seated. <clears throat> we have on the pink insert a list of those we remember well. On the reverse end, their family members, some who are here, some who are not. And on the reverse side, a litany which we will share. And thank you, Gary. Ray's name is on the one side and it's not in the other, but I'm going to do that. <laughs> he won't be left off. On this Memorial Day weekend, we give thanks, we give you thanks, O oh God, for the men and women who serve in the armed forces of this nation to protect and defend, defend our freedom. We remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice, and we ring the bell in their honor. In our congregation, members, and some in our extended family of faith have died this year. For their lives, the love they shared, and their many contributions to the cause of Christ, we give you thanks, Lord. We remember John Alfred Holt, Gail's brother, who entered this life August 4th, 1957, and entered the fullness of eternal life on August 6th, 2023. We ring the bell in John's memory and honor. <clears throat> we remember Walter Martin Soderberg, who entered this life on October 25th, 1932, and entered the fullness of eternal life on October 14th, 2023. We ring the bell in Walter's memory and honor. We remember William Burr Lydon, Matthew's grandfather, who entered this life on November 29th, 1936, and entered the fullness of eternal life on December 5th, 2023. We ring the bell in William's memory and honor. We remember Robert James Hannon, Muriel Lesner's son, who entered this life on December 6th, 1951, and entered the fullness of eternal life on December 15th, 2023. We ring the bell in Bob's memory and honor. We remember Raymond Thaddeus Gorski, who entered this life February 10th, 1944, and entered the fullness of eternal life February 24th, 2024. We ring the bell in Ray's memory and honor. We thank you, O oh God, for these dearly loved extended Grace Church family members. They were husbands, fathers, and grandfathers, sons, brothers, uncles, and dear friends. We bless you, Lord, for those who have meant so much to so many. Surround those who miss John, Walter, William, Robert, and Raymond with your love and comfort. May the remembrances of their love and courage, their compassion and faith, call us to gratitude this day and throughout our lives. Give them rest, Lord. Give us peace. Give all who continue to grieve the assurance of your love and grace poured out to those we love. We pray these things in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Amen. Karen? Testament reading lesson comes from Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphs, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, 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 the Lord Almighty, the whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and live among the people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen them. King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. With it he touched my mouth. See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Our epistle lesson comes from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it, it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For, for if you live according to sinful nature, you will die. But if you if by the spirit you are put to death and the misdeeds of the body will live, because those who are led by the spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received spirit of sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sacrifice, in order that we also may share in his glory. <coughs> Our gospel lesson comes from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now there was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council, came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one who could perform the miracles, miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit give birth, gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised by my sayings, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases, you hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You're Israel's lead teacher, said Jesus. And do you not understand these things? I tell the truth. We speak of what we know. We testify of what we have seen. But still, you do not believe, except our te testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has got, ever gone into king, heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must 
be lifted up. That everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. May God add a blessing to the reading and hearing and understanding of his holy word. <clears throat> Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> what do you remember well? Your wedding day? The birth of your children? Your engagement? A life-threatening or life-changing event? Loved ones who have gone before you. An experience of God's presence and power with you. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who serve and have served to keep our nation free. We especially remember those in peacetime, and in wars recent and long past, who gave the ultimate sacrifice. On this Memorial Sunday, it is good to look back and remember well. Isaiah remembered well a vision he had of Almighty God, the one true God, enthroned holy and worshipped in the temple. In the year that King Uzziah died, the name Uzziah means my strength is God. And who, who ascended the throne at 16 years of age was one of the godly kings in the southern kingdom of Judah. Uzziah reigned that kingdom for 52 years, dying about 740 years before Christ. Isaiah described his vision. I saw the Lord seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. When those we love die, our lives can take a dramatic turn. We have all experienced the pain and perplexing disorientation of losing someone we love. For Isaiah, the earthly king, Uzziah, the leader of Judah for 52 years, had died. Through the vision God gave Isaiah, Isaiah realized that the king of kings and lord of lords still reigned. What should we remember well? First, throughout our lives, when difficulties, challenges, sorrows, or grief set us back, confound and even overwhelm us, remember well, our God still reigns. During the reign of Queen Victoria, a London doctor visited a 72-year-old woman named Maria Vincent. Her husband had abandoned her some years before. She was poor and lived in humble surroundings. She was undernourished and had neither warm clothes or wood for a fire. The doctor couldn't believe that her friends would allow her to live like that. When the doctor asked Maria, she said she had no friends. Later in the discussion, she corrected herself. She said there might be one friend, but 
she was sure that the woman had forgotten about her. The doctor pressed her for the identity of her friend. Finally, Maria told him it was the queen herself. The two of them had been childhood friends. The doctor left, not sure that he believed Maria. But when he got home, he decided to write a letter to the queen relating the incident. A few days later, he received a letter from Queen Victoria. The story was true, and the queen had not forgotten her friend. Enclosed in the letter, the queen had included enough money to provide for all Maria's needs. For the remaining years of her life, Maria Vincent lived comfortably because she knew the queen. When things fall apart in our lives, remember well, we know the king. God still reigns from his heavenly throne. We are God's children. <clears throat> God still leads, guides, comforts, confronts, and forgives all who will just reach out to God in his throne room. Isaiah's vision changed his whole life. Our view, our perspective about God's nature and character can change our lives as well. Above God were seraphs, each with six wings. Remember in Bible study we learned that seraphs were angelic creatures, each with six wings, with two wings they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two, they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. Adjectives. Yes, adjectives have three forms. What in the world does that have to do with a, a vision from God? Well, the positive, the comparative, and the superlative. I did have to look them up. <laughs> but I could understand the examples. Good, better, best. Or small, smaller, smallest. The seraphs might have said, holy, holier, holiest. But since God is the definition of what is holy, there is no higher or greater quality of holiness than God. Thus, they merely said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord, three times to emphasize the nature of God's perfect holiness. What should we remember well? Second, we should remember well that our God is holy. God does not have or demonstrate holiness. God is holiness, just as God is love. <clears throat> holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of God's glory. <clears throat> Excuse me. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook. The temple was filled with smoke. The seraphim spoke of the earth as full of divine glory. God had given Moses directions for constructing a sanctuary for God, the place where God would make his presence known to Israel. When Moses finished setting up the, all of the parts of the tabernacle, God's sanctuary, then the cloud descended and covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled upon it. 
and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The psalmist said, the heavens declare the glory of God, the skies proclaim the work of God's hands. Oklahoma City pastor emeritus, teacher and author, C. Samuel Storms wrote, I define glory as the beauty of God unveiled. Glory is the resplendent radiance of his power and personality. Glory is all of God that makes God God and shows him to be worthy of our praise and our boasting and our trust and our hope and our confidence and our joy. Theologian and seminary professor and author Norman Geisler said, God is more interested in our holiness than in our happiness. No verse in the Bible says, be happy as I am happy. However, there are verses in the Bible that say, be holy as I am holy, declares the Lord your God. Yes, God is more interested in our character than our comfort. And God has been known to sacrifice the latter, our comfort, in order to achieve the former, our Christ-like character. The majestic scene of splendor and glory that Isaiah envisioned was both magnificent and a bit menacing. For at the voice of the seraphs, the doorposts and the thresholds shook. In verse 1, the train of God's robe filled the temple. Now in verse 4, the house of God filled with smoke, another sign of God's glorious presence. Isaiah had been warning the people of Judah because they had spurned, they had rejected their God who is holy, holy, holy. Turn of the 20th century British preacher and leading Bible teacher G. Campbell Morgan said, holiness is not freedom from temptation, but the power to overcome temptation. If we aren't growing in holiness, we need more of God the Holy Spirit for God the Holy Spirit gives us God's power to overcome temptation. Remember well, God is holy. <clears throat> Reacting to the vision of God, Isaiah said, Woe to me, I am ruined. That is cut off, destroyed, come to an end. The people of Israel understood that to see God would be, mean they would die. That's why he said, I am ruined. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. In the face of God's glorious, holy presence, Isaiah confessed his own unworthiness his sin. Turn to the 5th fifth, fifth century Bishop of Hippo in North Africa, St. Augustine said, in failing to confess, Lord, I would only hide you from myself, not hide me from you. Isaiah did not hide his sin, and neither should we. What should we remember well? Third, we should remember well our sinfulness. A father took his children to their cabin in the woods. Mom stayed home. <coughs> I can understand why. The cabin was rustic with no running water, no electricity, but plenty of space for the children to run and play. When it was time to return home, the children dressed and helped to load up the car. As they got into the car, the father looked at each of them and thought, they look pretty good, a little grubby, but clean enough. 
Later, when they pulled into a McDonald's to get lunch, the father looked back at them and realized they were very dirty. <laughs> what looked clean at the cabin, now in the light of civilization, looked pretty bad. In the light of God's perfect holiness, even our goodness looks dirty to God. When did you or I last confess our specific sins? Hopefully this morning in our time of personal confession. Confession is the first step in repentance recognizing, admitting, and declaring what we have done that we know God views as wrong. Isaiah's vision confirmed what he knew was true. The southern kingdom of Judah and we should bow before God of all creation and tremble before our holy God because of our sin. Remember well the stain of our sin that Jesus died to remove. But before discouragement or fear could creep in, one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. What should we remember well? Fourth, we should remember well God's love and forgiveness. Jesus' death on the cross atoned for, paid the penalty for our sin. To atone means to make us at one, atone, at one, with God. The seraph touched Isaiah's mouth with the purifying coal. Then Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. Through the cross, the symbol of our atonement, God has touched our lips and our limbs, our heads and our hearts with complete forgiveness. God loves us that much. Will we respond as Isaiah did? Here am I, send me. Don't worry that God might send you to Africa. <laughs> he already sent me there. <laughs> God doesn't want your ability. He wants your availability. If you give God your availability, just as he gave Isaiah the strength, the message, and the perseverance, God will provide all the capability you need to serve God well. Remember well God's love and forgiveness and make yourself available for God's use. Today, on this Memorial Sunday, let us remember well the blessings we have because of those who gave their lives for our freedoms. Let us remember well those whom we have loved, who have gone before us. Let us remember well what God has done for us and wants to do in us and through us. When we remember well, we will draw closer to God and love and serve God as we love and serve one another. Amen. Jesus said, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. 
but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. As we continue in a spirit of worship, let us offer ourselves and our financial gifts to God. The usher will receive the morning offering. and gifts to you, evidence of our desire to store up treasure in heaven. We also offer ourselves as your willing servants. Use us and our financial offering to proclaim your goodness, O oh God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. <coughs> Let us turn to God in prayer. Gracious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you give life to all in our world. May all the world come to know you in Jesus our Savior through the power of your Holy Spirit. Ignite the fire of your Spirit within so that all people might demonstrate the fruit of your Spirit and our world have peace, especially in Ukraine, Israel and Gaza, Syria, Afghanistan, Sudan, and anywhere conflicts erupt because of the desire for power and control. Break the bonds of corruption and greed that result in human trafficking of, and all kinds of evil. Gracious Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you give life to all in this nation. May all in this country come to know you in Jesus, our Savior, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Nurture faith in every elected and appointed official and all who seek elected office, especially President Biden, Vice President Harris, all 100 senators, 435 representatives, 50 governors, 5 U.S. territorial governors, and every judge. Before people protest, may they know and understand what the slogans they chant really mean. May our young people not follow the loudest voices, but rather seek your truth. Gracious Trinity, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you give life to our neighbors near and far, those in need. Pour your blessings on those who struggle in this life, at work or school, finding friends or companions, making a living that supports their families. Give your peace to the disgruntled, disheartened, and discouraged. Give your wisdom to the anxious, the confused, or the concerned. Give your provision to all needing assistance to make it through life or even another day. Give your healing mercies to the sick, the sorrowing, the grieving, and the dying. Gracious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you give life to your church. May all those who sit in pews Sunday after Sunday and those who think they are not religious but spiritual come to know you better 
May their faith in Jesus our Savior, through the power of your Holy Spirit, give them hope and joy every day. Break through the false guilt of confessed sin and any resistance to your love in Jesus Christ, so many will come to new or renewed faith and salvation because we believe. Gracious Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you give life to our extended family of faith. May all our young couples, individuals, and families remember to cry out with the angels, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is filled full of your glory. May all our couples and those they love remember their guilt is taken away and their sin atoned for in Jesus' death on the cross. May each one gathered here and those unable to be among us remember to fulfill their obligation not to live according to the sinful nature, but by the Spirit put to death the misdeeds of the body and truly live. O he, Karen, Matthew, Anthony, Nicholas, David, Susan, Betsy, Grant, Danielle, Lori, Grandpa Soderbergh's great-granddaughter, Tom, Casey, and Lisa, David, Gail, Carla, Anna, Gary, Gloria, Lisa, Todd, David, Matthew, May, and Oki's grandchildren, Josiah, Lydia, and Dominic, David's friend, Amalia, Gary N., Sandy J., Muriel, Babs, Chris F., Cliff, Penny, Julius, Caroline, Tina, Anthony, Aregia, Todd G. May those we know and care about who are struggling or just trying to move forward, remember the Spirit himself testifies with their spirit that they are God's children. And if they are God's children, then they are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. May those enduring life-threatening illnesses or grieving the loss of loved ones remember, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Hear us now, Lord, as we lift the silent prayers we hold in our hearts to your throne of grace.
that are on the communion table. The red one is in honor of those who serve. There is one white one without a card in honor and memory of those who served and have died. And the carnations with cards on them, alphabetically arranged by the last name, you're welcome to come up, family members, and take following the benediction, following the postlude and our <laughs> choral hymn, choral response. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all to sustain you, to renew your faith, and to give you hope every day. Let us go forth to love and serve God as we love and serve one another. Amen. Please be